Hello, chart watchers and Decision Point faithful. Welcome to this special edition of the Decision Point show. Today, I'm going to talk about chart patterns that can be used in bull and bear markets, but there are a few caveats to how to use them in each market. So I'll be talking a little bit about that as well. So let's get started. So what are the patterns that we will discuss and how is this gonna go? So we wanna recognize some of the basic chart patterns. We're gonna look at the bullish patterns. We're gonna look at the bearish patterns. Then we're gonna talk about the signals that we can get and some of the minimum targets, upside and downside targets that you can calculate by using these chart patterns. And then I also will often set stops when I use certain chart patterns as well. So we'll start with bullish chart patterns, but as of the recording currently, we are seeing more of a bear market situation, but I'm gonna go through both because this is something maybe you're watching during a bull market. So the first ones we'll go over are those bullish chart patterns. We're gonna look at the ascending triangle and the symmetrical triangle. We'll look at a bull flag, a falling wedge, and a double triple bottom, as well as a cup and handle. And then finally, a V bottom. These are The V bottoms are kind of interesting to look at. This is what we're going to want to watch for at the end of the current bear market. And something that was made you know us know that the 2020 bear market was about over was the V bottom that was um, that developed. So let's just start looking at these. These are some historical charts that I've been using for this. But when we're done, I'm going to show you a couple of um, more recent uh, versions of these chart patterns. So first of all is the ascending triangle. And we call it an ascending triangle because it has rising bottoms on the bottom of the triangle. So it's an ascending triangle. Ascending triangles are bullish. Basically, you have this flat top, this resistance level, but the bears, every time they pull price down, they can't quite get it all the way down to the bottom of the trading range. And so as it goes through, eventually the bulls will win. And in this case, you see a nice big gap up out of the pattern. Now, typically we don't talk about targets for one of these patterns, but I have um, found and have read of using the back end of these triangle patterns. And basically, if you look at the height of the pattern in the back, your minimum upside target should be about the same. So in this case, it would have been kind of right about here that our upside target would have been. Next up, okay, um, such as the Zoom meeting, correct? We have these uh, dogs barking in the background. The next one we're gonna look at is the symmetrical triangle. And you'll notice there's a breakdown from this. A lot of people think of symmetrical triangles as a bullish um, formation. But honestly, symmetrical triangles can break either way. In this case, I know we're talking about bullish patterns, but the idea is the same. So you have a continuation of what the previous trend was. That's why it's a continuation pattern. And typically you're going to see these form and they as again, they're not going to be a reversal. More than likely, you're going to see the prior trend as where you get the breakdown. And certainly in this case, that's what we did get. And unfortunately, no downside or upside targets for these types of patterns. But ultimately, if you're looking at a symmetrical triangle at the top of a rising trend, you should expect it to move even higher. All right, let's go for the next one. The bull flag. These are probably one of the easiest ones to identify. They are usually, you see a big run up, a very quick run up in price, and then a consolidation that usually has sort of a downward angle to it. That is the bull flag. And the expectation, of course, is a breakout to the upside. Now, the target is determined by the height of the flagpole. So you can see the flagpole is about this distance. And if you add that distance to the top of the formation, our minimum upside target is right about here. Now, we didn't quite get that out of this triangle. All right. So we didn't actually get that out of that triangle. 
So let's look at the falling wedge. And so not to be confused with the descending triangle, which I'm gonna look at a little bit later, the falling wedge is a bullish pattern and the expectation is that upside breakout. These again, don't have a upside target that you can calculate. You can kind of calculate the back of the pattern like we were looking at the other one and then add that on the breakout. Um, but really the main thing for these patterns is just to expect them to break to the upside. All right, the bullish double bottom. These are probably the easiest uh, also to identify. Basically looks like a big W. And what you would expect is a upside breakout. And basically you look at this confirmation line, which comes right through the center of that W. And once you get price to come out of that, that is when you know that the pattern is executing, it's been confirmed. So the expectation again is the height of this pattern. So we add it to that confirmation line, which tells us our upside target is right in this area, came very close before it dropped back down. Then you can see we had another bullish double bottom back here, height of the pattern, add it to the top of the breakout of that pattern to the confirmation line and your upside target is right about here. Now we actually came just above that target on this case. And like I said, there's their minimum targets. You should expect them to fully execute to the level that is expected by the height of that pattern. So the double bottom formations are pretty easy to spot. The cup and handle is a very similar pattern. It's a basing pattern. Usually what you'll see is kind of a rounded bottom or a saucer shape followed by a handle or a decline, a declining trend. You wanna see the top part of this, this um, cup to be less than the the side that it started from. So we had the big breakdown and we can see that this came up not quite to this level, started to pull back at the expectation was a breakout and certainly that's what we got. In this case, you can also see a possible triple top or possible head and shoulders developing, but we will get there soon. Now this is the V bottom. And again, you, you'll notice, you can see it back here as well. You get these V shaped recoveries as we often talk about them. And the idea behind these patterns is you get the V and once it retraces this side, once it retraces one third of this side, so basically right about here, that executes that pattern. And that pattern tells us that we should expect not only a continuation of the rising trend, but we should see price overcome the left side of this V bottom. And certainly that's what we saw in the case of Dell back in March of 2021. All right, let's talk about those bearish chart patterns. The first one is your descending or symmetrical triangle. Remember we talked about that symmetrical triangle earlier. It's a continuation. So you can also see that symmetrical triangle be a bearish pattern. It's all dependent on what the trend is before you go into it. There's the rising wedge, which we've been seeing quite a bit of the bear flag, which is pretty much the opposite of the bull. Then we have double and triple tops. So that is the opposite of your double and triple bottom patterns. And the most famous, I think, of all bearish chart patterns is probably the head and shoulders. But I have to say it's one of my least favorite as it rarely um, resolves to the minimum downside target. At least that's what I've been experienced, uh, what I've experienced. Then there is a broadening or a megaphone pattern. We'll look at that more closely. And then of course, those parabolics, which Carl Swenlin and I both talk about often as uh, something to, it's very dangerous, but of course they're very fun to be a part of while the price is moving higher. So here is a descending triangle. This is the opposite of that bullish ascending triangle. In this case, you can see that the bulls are starting to lose ground. Every time we get back up here, we end up with a declining trend, but the bottom is mostly flat. So the expectation is height of the back of the pattern. The downside target is then 
down here because height of the pattern, take it to the bottom of the pattern, add it, and there you go. We ended up seeing that minimum downside target in this case. We had a lot of other things really telling us it was going south anyway. You can see back here, we did have that PMO cell signal that led into this. The ascending wedge, a rising wedge, this is a bearish pattern as well. And you'll probably see a lot of those in a bear market which you know they really come across and they they're more of a fake out breakout sort of a situation so you can see that the trend was moving up but you notice that we were getting a little bit too extended here on the rise it was a little bit more steep than the tops here that's what forms that wedge and the expectation is eventually a breakdown and uh, in this case, of course, it did fulfill. Now I'm showing you examples where they all fulfilled, but they don't always do that. And particularly in a bear market situation, you should not expect your bullish patterns to resolve as expected uh, to the upside. Uh, bearish patterns are more likely if you are in a bear market, you'll more than likely see those break down as expected. Here's the reverse flag. Like I said, pretty much the same as what we were looking at before, but it's a deep decline followed by some consolidation with an upward trend. You can see it's upward. And then you get that failure and then the minimum downside target comes down to here. We didn't actually get quite to that level, but certainly it did tell us that uh, price was in trouble. And again, the PMO was already signaling that to our price momentum oscillator. Then there is the bearish double top. And you can see right there, top one, top two. This is your confirmation line drawn from the middle of this M shape. And so you can tell it got a little messy here and we had a false breakdown, but eventually once this all kind of sorted itself out, you can actually see a little bit of a double bottom in here and the confirmation line, it hit that broke out, but then failed. So that was also a sign that we had some bearish activity going on. And uh, we ended up with, again, that double top ended up executing even after all of this messiness to the downside and it did hit its minimum downside target. The triple top, it looks a lot like a double top. I find that I see double tops far more than I see triple tops or triple bottoms, but it's the same idea. Instead of the double top where you get the breakdown here, a triple top is we just tried one more time to get the breakout and failed, came back down. And then you can see we didn't even manage to continue the rally over here. Once that turned down, we knew we were in a lot of trouble. Came down here to that confirmation line and did break down, hit that minimum downside target, which is the height of the pattern subtracted from that confirmation line. All right, the famous head and shoulders pattern. These are also pretty easy to identify, but as I said, I find that they don't hit their minimum downside targets as often as I would like or expect. When you're talking about setting these downside targets and looking for reversals, it gets a little bit tricky when these patterns don't work out the way they're supposed to. So you can see we have the head and then a left shoulder and a right shoulder. So the shoulders are below the head. They tend to be about the same, uh, at about the same height. And you'll tend to see a lot more volume on the front end than on the back end. And you can see that kind of was the case as we came into this head and shoulders, a lot of high volume here. And it wasn't until we started to get the breakdown that we saw the high volume hit over here. So again, these are reversal patterns. So they come up in a rising trend, form this pattern, you get the breakdown. I didn't talk about the neckline. The neckline you draw in between the lows between head and right shoulder, head and left shoulder. So you can see that's the low here. This is the low there. So we have kind of a rising neckline here on this particular head and shoulders. And again, we got the breakdown as expected, but it never quite hit that downside target. 
All right, the broadening pattern or a megaphone. These are bearish patterns. And the reason why is it shows an increase in volatility. So you have this range and then you start to get wider and wider and wider. And typically when you get those megaphone patterns, they're not your friend because volatility is rarely your friend. So in this case, the expectation would be a drop and then an eventual breakdown here. All right, the parabolic. This is Apple, and I think this one gives you a really good picture as to how dangerous these parabolic moves can be. And like I said, it's a lot of fun when you're on the move and in one of these parabolics, but you need to be very careful because when they break down, they generally break down very quickly and in a big way. So you can see it took all this time to get the rise and then immediately, boom, it just took only a few months before we had that breakdown and it was a it moved price down 44%. You can see the next parabolic that hit us right here on Apple and then it's swift breakdown and then eventual move to a 32% decline. Here's another longer term parabolic and again, big breakdown, quick breakdown, very painful. And then we have another longer term parabolic going on here with the expectation of a breakdown. And if you are in the beginning of 2022, you know that we did eventually get that swift breakdown from Apple. So how can we set stops when we use these chart patterns? Once you recognize the pattern, you can then look at those minimum and uh, minimum upside and downside targets. And again, they're always pretty much always dependent on the height of the actual pattern. Those minimum downside targets will offer you a pretty good stop level. You can also set targets based on um, minimum upside targets from some of those bullish patterns. You can look at nearby support and resistance from those patterns, and you can take half of the height of the pattern if you're sitting at all-time highs. You can look at that bullish continuation pattern and then just think of about half the height of that pattern moving up would be a pretty good target for you. So here are a couple more examples. We have a double bottom. We had the um, confirmation line, the minimum upside target is way up here. So that's where I would put my target if I were buying into this G bio at this time. So we get the breakout, we expect it to go here. How do we set the stop if we're talking about getting in back here? You can set that stop however deep you want, but start looking toward these support levels and of the pattern to make a, de a decision as to whether it makes sense for you to set your stop at the bottom of that pattern or maybe halfway down that pattern, however it makes sense for you and your risk appetite. This is a busted double top. Upside breakouts from bearish patterns we consider especially bullish. So in this case, we had that double top came down, never quite got to the confirmation line before breaking out. You can see as it was coming down, it formed a bullish falling wedge. So in the short term, we would expect a breakout based on the way this was pulling back from that double top. All right, before I leave, I do want to remind everybody that I do have a live trading room on Mondays, and you should check that out. So let's look at a couple of real life, real world examples going on currently. And like I said, currently we are experiencing a bear market. I think that Bitcoin right now is an excellent example of a couple of bearish chart patterns going on here, quite a few. And I don't even have all of them marked when I look at this. <laughs> so we have, first of all, in the longer term, a pretty clear double top on Bitcoin. And our expectation, of course, is that it's going to hit that confirmation line and break down. Now, when this was forming and Carl and I were talking about Bitcoin um, 
actually having the uh, possibility of moving back down to this basing pattern, people thought we were crazy. Uh, but as you can see right now, that is starting to fulfill. Now, the other pattern that is hiding in here is a head and shoulder. So left shoulder, head, right shoulder confirmation line right there. So the expectation would be a drop once it got through that confirmation line or neckline in the case of a head and shoulders. The minimum downside expectation would probably bring Bitcoin, let's see, coming out of that, oh, one, two, three, four, five, would put uh, Bitcoin close to 20,000 just by looking at this smaller head and shoulders. I could also um, annotate a rising wedge, which is bearish, and we got the breakdown from that. So really, uh, with Bitcoin, there are a lot of problems going on, and these bearish patterns really gave us a sense that things were going to go wrong. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that in a bear market, or when a stock is in a bear market, and with Bitcoin, that happened right about here, once you're in a bear market configuration or you see that 50 move below the 200 with that death cross, um, then you can really start expecting those bearish patterns to confirm that we will see resolution to the downside when we're in a bear market situation. All right, let's look at something a little bit more uh, happy. <laughs> let's see here. Actually, I want to come to this chart right here of USO. And I don't have it annotated that clearly, so I'm going to do that. We have rising bottoms and we have a flat top. So I'm just going to drag this and make a there we go. So we'll take this, bring that here. So that is an ascending triangle and that is bullish. It's telling us to expect a breakout of this pattern on oil. So really oil is probably one of the few things that is doing well in the market currently with the way it's situated. All right, another one to look at is TLT right now. So interest rates have been rising very quickly. You can see that it's put TLT in a bear market situation, but we did manage to pull out a falling wedge right here. And the expectation is a breakout. And sure enough, we're getting that breakout. Unfortunately, TLT is in such a bear market environment that we don't expect this to really resolve much further to the upside than probably that 20 day EMA, possibly up here to that 122 level is where we would expect resolution of this bullish falling wedge. And let's look at another example for us, GDX. GDX is in a tailspin right now. Gold, the dollar has been rising very quickly. Gold has been under pressure because of that. And consequently, gold miners are really struggling. Not only do they have to deal with a falling, um, falling gold, but they also have to deal with a bear market environment. And so they're really getting the, the double punch here. You can see we had a shorter term rising wedge, which is a bearish pattern, got the breakdown from that as expected. Then we looked right here and you could see that there's an even larger rising wedge. And so when this dropped, it wasn't a matter of just a short term drop. Once we noticed that we had a more mm, longer term ascending triangle or rising wedge, we would then expect it to fall even further. We're getting ready to hit some support right now, but it's looking pretty ugly for GDX right, right now. All right, let's look at the 10 year treasury yield. We were talking about the fact that we were seeing yields rising. Well, currently they're, they're not. Uh, and we had a rising wedge, a bearish pattern. We notified subscribers, that's what we were seeing, that we could see a breakdown in interest rates. And currently that's what we are seeing. Now you could make a case for a little bit of a double top 
forming here, but I'm not in favor of that just because the second top is really farther away from that first top and the ascending wedge, the rising wedge really is the pattern to pay attention to. And sure enough, that's what we were seeing with the 10 year treasury yield. So I'm gonna go back and I want to discuss a little bit more about these patterns. All right, so let's just review a couple of these again. So there's your parabolic and remember, these are gonna give you those big breakdowns. Now I'm going over these bearish patterns again, mainly because you should realize that if you are in a bear market environment, there is a high likelihood that your bearish patterns are going to resolve to the downside as expected. Now, if we're in a bull market, like we generally are and have been, then you can expect those bullish patterns to resolve to the upside, but then you're gonna have some problems with them um, breaking down more often than breaking out in a, in a bear market. So let me go back here again. So we're gonna look at a few more. Again, the megaphone pattern, I don't have a real time example of that one, but again, when you see that volatility rising, that's when you're gonna be in trouble. And there's your head and shoulders. But like I said, they don't always resolve all the way to their downside target, but in a bear market situation, I would say there is a high likelihood they will. And again, there's your triple top, and your bearish double top, which I'm seeing a lot of currently in this market as we experience this bear market drop. The reverse flag, and you can see these, I have to say flag formations tend to resolve exactly as they're supposed to. It's very rare that I see a flag formation not resolve to the upside for a bull flag or to the downside for a reverse bear flag. All right, there's your ascending wedge. Again, these are ones to keep an eye on as well. And the descending triangle, flat bottom, declining tops. Again, you're seeing that the bulls are losing the battle. Every time they come up, they cannot get back to that prior high, yet support is still holding. They're able to keep support holding, but eventually the bears win the day and you will see that breakdown. So that pretty much concludes my chart pattern review here for you. I just want to remind you of those bull market and bear market rules in conjunction with chart patterns. If I can't get anything through today, that's what I want to get through. In a bull market, expect those bullish patterns to resolve as expected, but in a bear market, expect those bullish patterns to not resolve as expected. In a bear market, it's the opposite. You're going to rarely see those bull market patterns work out in a bear market, whereas those bearish patterns in a bear market are more than likely to move downward. That's all I have for you today. And thank you very much. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.